I am Manny Doss. I know you heard my story a few TikToks ago, but I'm back to tell the story straight. It seems I offended the true crime police. Probably a lonely white woman who wishes she had a husband to murder. Anyways. Everyone thought I was a sweet lady. I smiled and laughed all the time. I was always surrounded by my grandchildren and seemed to love nothing more than spending time with my family. But behind the happy facade was a trail of death and murder that I carried out from the 1920s to 1954. It was then that I confessed to killing four of my five husbands, and authorities believed I may have killed many of my blood relatives as well. I had been living a double life for decades. My story begins with my birth to a family of farmers in 1905 in Blue Mountain, Alabama. Instead of going to school, I stayed at home to work on household chores and tend to the family farm. I was the youngest. I suffered a head injury while riding a train at the age of seven. The head injury changed my life forever. As I grew older, I dreamed of living an idyllic life with my future husband. Reading romance magazines, especially the Lonely Hearts columns, took up much of my spare time. I used romance magazines as an escape from my abusive father while my mother turned a blind eye. At the age of 16, I married a man who I had only known for four months. Charlie Braggs and I had four children together from 1921 to 1927. The marriage fell apart at that point. We lived with his mother, but she had the same abusive type of behavior as my father. We divorced in 1928. Just a year after our divorce, I married my second husband. He was an abusive alcoholic from Jacksonville, Florida named Frank Harrelson. We met through a Lonely Hearts column. Harrelson wrote me romantic letters, while I responded with steamy letters and photos. Despite the abuse, our marriage lasted 16 years until 1945. During this period, I killed her own newborn granddaughter a few days after the birth by using a hairpin to stab her in the brain. A few months after my granddaughter's death, my two-year-old grandson, Robert, died of asphyxiation while in my care. These two kids belonged to Melvina, the oldest daughter I had with my first husband. My second husband was next on my murderer's list. Following a night of drunken revelry at the end of World War II, I mixed a secret ingredient into his hidden jar of moonshine. He was dead less than a week later on September 15, 1945. People assumed he died of food poisoning. Meanwhile, I collected enough life insurance money from Harrelson's death to buy a plot of land and a house near Jacksonville. I then murdered Arlie Lanning of Lexington, North Carolina in 1952 after he responded to a Lonely Hearts classified ad placed by me. Playing the doting wife, I added poison to one of Lanning's meals and he died shortly thereafter. He was a heavy drinker, so doctors attributed the heart attack to alcohol. My murders continued for years, each one getting easier for me as I became more skilled at disguising the poison in my victim's food or drink. Over time, I became known as the giggling granny due to my friendly and outgoing demeanor, always laughing and joking with those around me. Yeah, who knew? The old lady with jokes was a raging lunatic. Let's just say I was spicy. As my death toll continued to rise, suspicion started to grow around me. People began to wonder why so many of my family members and husbands had died under mysterious circumstances. I mean do we really have to wonder? When was the last time you went to a family reunion? Oh wait. I always managed to deflect any accusations, using my charm and wit to convince people that I was innocent. I then married Samuel Doss of Tulsa, Oklahoma, in June 1953. He was a Nazarene minister who had lost his family to a tornado in Carroll County, Arkansas. Samuel disapproved of the romance novels and stories I adored. In September, Samuel was admitted to the hospital with flu-like symptoms. I wonder why. It wasn't until 1954, after the death of Samuel Doss, that the authorities finally caught up with me. The doctor who had treated Samuel had become suspicious and convinced me to allow an autopsy to be performed, which revealed the presence of arsenic in his system. The police began investigating and soon uncovered a trail of death and destruction that led back to me. I was arrested and charged with murder. 
during my trial, showed no remorse for my actions, laughing and joking with the reporters in the courtroom. I would have killed my fifth husband too if he hadn't caught on to my scheme. In the end, I was found guilty of four counts of murder and sentenced to life in prison. I died in prison in 1965 at the age of 59. To this day, I remain one of the most notorious female serial killers in history. My story has been retold in books and movies, and my legacy of murder and deception continues to fascinate and horrify people around the world. And now on TikTok.